People forget, you know, banks are highly regulated. They're not regulated to lend money. They're regulated to not lose depositors' money. That's their primary focus. Um, and so in their mind, they're selling all sorts of services, deposit accounts, maybe some FX, maybe some, you know, all sorts of things. But lending isn't really what they're regulated to do. They're really good at lending at times. They're good at lending to companies that are more established, that have capital and have liquidity, and they aren't concerned about, um, you know, repayment of it. We actually have a little tagline. It's really, you know, Peter Timbus really started and came up with it is lending to the opportunity. Banks primarily look backwards and we look forward. You know, what does that mean? Banks look backwards, say, let me see your last three years historical financials. Let me see this. Let me see this. Let me see that. We look forward and say, yeah, you may have $100,000 revenue right now, but you've got a new contract and you have to bill a million dollars over the next year and you need liquidity and capital to support that. We're going to look forward at that new contract and give you the working capital support to uh, be able to perform under it. We use a factoring approach, you know, primarily focused on here's build receivables, completed work and services. Although we also use uh, a concept called earned but unbilled. You're working on uh, more for primarily services contracts. Um, you're working and for some reason you can only bill every month and your employees want to get paid every two weeks. So you say, well, what do I do about that payroll in the middle of the month? Well, we can make, um, you know, take some contract analysis and other things but we can make available borrowing capacity in mid-month under an earned but unbilled before you even have an invoice to be able to make sure that you can pay that payroll. And then at the end of the month, you factor the primary invoice uh, to pay back that earned unbilled amount and just kind of keep rolling it along and rolling it forward. You know, how do we do that versus how do the bank does it? Well, you know, we're not a big regulated bank. You know, a bank would have, well, as far as I can't even imagine how many employees. They probably have a half million employees across the United States. We have 20. And we are, we've been in business in the government space since 1959, 61 years. Can't say it was all me. I've been here for the last now 18 years. Um, but we know the government space and primarily service companies. Um, and, and we love it because the one thing service companies do really well and government contractors is, one, once you perform, the government's a good payer, as Vernon noted. But two is you tend to have growth opportunities that are exponential, not the traditional organic two or three percent. You get a new contract and you double or triple in size. And then you're building past performance. Yes. And what happens is you get another contract because now you got more past performance scores. And then you get another one and yes. another one. And then all of a sudden you're Vernon Green and you're saying, I don't need to factor anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go to a bank, but, but that's okay because it's the small businesses that drive America and that's what the government's trying to um, encourage and develop. Financing is, a, is obviously a big piece of that. How do you make it work? But also, a lot of times it's really the keystone, I guess is the best description, of getting the contract, right? I mean, what's one of the biggest things about getting a new contract? One, there's probably three things, right? It's past performance or your background and expertise. Second is that your skills fit what the government needs. So you gotta find the right buyer, the right area. If here's where your specialty niche is, who's the buyer of that? And don't be marketing to everybody, focus on where it is. But third is financial capacity. So a really big thing is being able to demonstrate financial capacity. And we do that through issuing financial support letters. You're pursuing bids. We can help you with saying, hey, we have qualified Tamika for a million dollar line of credit to support this new contract that you've got out of solicitation on and to demonstrate that you can therefore handle it. Otherwise they're looking at saying, Tamika's great, but she doesn't really have the financing capacity to be able to perform under that.